subscribe ecofan for more educational videos welcome dear learners today we are going to discuss about phyto remediation in connection with ecosystem services as we know the term remediation means removing toxic or biohazard contaminants that pose health uh, consequences or threats to the environment from an infected area so simply stating that remediation is a cleanup or a disinfecting process bioremediation is a branch of biotechnology that employs the use of living organisms like microbes and bacteria uh, plants in removal of contaminants pollutants and toxic uh, substances from soil water or any kind of environment bioremediation is used to clean up oil spills or contaminated groundwater so these are the applications of the bioremediation so when we are discussing the phytoremediation phytoremediation is just one part of a remediation in which we use the plants instead of all other available microbes or any kind of uh, other uh, biological material when we deal with the phytoremediation it is a plant based approach which involves the use of plant to extract and remove elemental pollutants or lower their bioavailability in soil or water or air so plants have the abilities to absorb ionic compounds in the soil as well as water even at low concentration through their root systems so phytoremediation has been defined as a use of green plants basically and their associated microorganisms because in plants the microorganisms are in association with the plant roots that is a rhizosphere so microorganisms are associated with the plants and they are using the phytoremediation soil amendments and agro uh, agronomic techniques to remove contain or render harmless environmental pollutants so this is a general term or general definition of phytoremediation so there are many kind of uh, technologies or phytoremediation technologies that have been employed over the period of time or that have been uh, uh, that have been discovered or invented by research or technology first for example here in in, uh, in picture we can see yeah we have a uh, phytofiltration uh, with rhizofiltration or blastofiltration these uh, employ the same procedure all these three then we have phytoimmobilization humification lignification phytostabilization uh, biomineralization or phytosequestration phytovolatilization phytodegradation phytostimulation phytoaccumulation and phytocontaminant uh, containment so these were some of the technologies and few of these technologies i will go in brief before discussing the ecosystem services that we uh, get from these kind of technologies first one is phyto extraction is basically use of plant uh, it is uh, the use of pollutant accumulating plants to remove metals or organics from soil by concentrating them in harvestable plant parts so basically plants are absorbing so, such kind of metals or organic compounds into their uh, uh, into their leaves shoots or roots so that that uh, organic material of the plants can be uh, then harvested and then that can be safely disposed into the environment so this is one of the technologies basically here from the roots you can see the uh, from the picture from the roots the contaminants get absorbed into the plants then is phytotransformation or it's also called a phytodegradation that is basically degradation of complex organic molecules to simple molecules or the incorporation of these molecules into the soil plant tissue so basically in the soil when there is any kind of harmful organic or metallic compounds so the plants transform those harmful 
molecules or organic substances into uh, very less uh, toxic substances so basically they change their uh, oxidation numbers or their um, compound uh, mixture so it, this happens basically in association of the microorganisms that are present in the rhizosphere so when they uh, release some kind of substances these uh, pollutants get converted into certain other compounds that are not harmful to the uh, plants or animals or we can say the food chain that is existing in that area another one is phytostimulation basically plant assisted bioremediation the stimulation micro or uh, microbial or fungal degradation by release of exudates enzymes into the root zone basically in the rhizosphere when there is a presence of microorganisms maybe the bacteria or fungus they release some kind of enzymes that degrade uh, such kind of uh, pollutants so uh, such kind of enzymatic activities from microbial uh, population on the rhizosphere can be employed by reducing the toxicity of the soil phytovolatization it's basically the uptake and transpiration of contaminant by plant with the release of contaminant or a modified form of contaminant to the atmosphere from the soil basically in this process the plant roots they absorb the pollutants from the soil or water they uh, transpire these kind of pollutants into volatile form so any kind of metal or organic material that is not in volatile form in the soil plants convert into the volatile form and they release this kind of contaminants into uh, the atmosphere that is very less toxic so basically here they change their chemistry or they change their oxidation states whatever that makes it volatile and release into the atmosphere so basically here the soils they are uh, made uh, less uh, toxic because of the phyto uh, volatilization and also the contaminants are not stored into the organic biomass of the plants then is the rhizofiltration the use of plant roots that absorb or adsorb pollutants mainly metals uh, but also organic pollutants from water or aqueous uh, waste streams so basically these technologies have been used right now in various uh, artificial wetland kind of systems where domestic or industrial waste waters are used uh, as a source of water and some plants uh, like typha they are used for rhizofiltration because the roots of the plants they ex uh, act as a sieve or they act as a filters here you can see the polluted water is pumped into the system where the, we have uh, such kind of plants like typha or whatever wet, wetland kind of plants these roots act as a sieve and they filter the pollutants they uh, filter many kind of uh, organic or metallic substances and they make this water less polluted that can be used for any other activities like irrigations and then is phytostabilization so it is also called in place inactivation and environment restoration or inert is a use of plant to reduce the mobility and availability of pollutants into the soil into the environment that thus preventing their migration to the groundwater and their entry into the food chain so basically the pollutants which are easily available to the plant roots for the absorption by this technology they are made uh, stable so that they cannot get absorbed into the system in the food chain or they cannot get percolated or leached uh, into the groundwater so this is also uh, one of the technologies of the phytoremediation so this was some brief about the technologies which are commonly used but there are some species of plants particularly grass species that have been employed over the period of time for the phytoremediation for example here i have the example of western wheat grass it is basically used for reducing the hydrocarbons from the soil or water and it uses the technology that is called a rise of a degradation basically at a root zone these hydrocarbons get degraded by the microbial enzymatic activities and uh, similarly uh, colonial bent grass it uh, degrades metals by hyper accumulation because uh, when we accumulate uh, certain kind of pollutants into the biomass that 
makes the soil less polluted so these are some kind of hyper -accumula uh, accumulators they are very responsive for certain kind of metals uh, similarly a uh, blue gamma grass buffalo grass they are used for the hydrocarbons some field uh, chickweed it is for use for cadmium or miners let use also for cadmium bermuda grass uh, that is also called cyanodon uh, ductilon it's very common uh, in the environment and in the surrounding that is also used for the uh, accumulation or residue degradation of the hydrocarbons similarly we have other forbs like yarrow it's also used for the cadmium uh, chaves that is cadmium polycarbonate biphenyls uh, we use garden arch uh, uh, it basically degrades by the metabolism process then uh, brassica gentia basically also used for the cadmium uh, metals the rhizofiltration and accumulation technology our process is employed by uh, this uh, indian mustard then uh, field mustard cadmium or zinc it is degraded or uh, accumulated by the this uh, field uh, mustard then common foxglow sunflower so there are n number of uh, plants that have been employed some trees are also uh, very helpful like red maple for leachates european white branch that is polycarbonate uh, biphenyls or poly aromatic hydrocarbons so these are some plants that have been employed over the period of time for degradation or rhizofiltration or phytostabilization of certain kind of uh, particular kind of elements or organic substances so what are the ecosystem services that have been uh, identified or that have been provided by the phytoremediation first is carbon sequestration in the soil so basically manage the soil organic matter by by the phyto uh, remediation so then carbon sequestration in perennial plants convert crop plants uh, uh, to the grassland or forests methane emission reduction water quality maintenance erosion and sediment control flood control salinization uh, and water table regulation wildlife so these are n number of the services that have been provided but most important service that is provided by the phytoremediation is reducing the toxicity of the soils and the wastewaters by various technologies or by various process that i have discussed earlier in earlier in this lecture and now what are the economic opportunities so when we are discussing uh, the ecosystem services we have to discuss the what are the economic opportunities that we provide or that we get from the phytoremediation so some intangible benefits that we can see are physically they are present in the environment so first one is bioenergy pulp paper or lumber because when we go for the phytoremediation certain plant species uh, the biomass that uh, is generated from the phytoremediation can be used for the energy generation pulp paper or lumbering uh, containers or chopsticks can be made from such kind of uh, wood uh, that or uh, biomass that is generated from the phytoremediation can be used as an animal feed or structural composite lumber or composite panels so these are some tangible benefits or economic opportunities that we get from the phytoremediation so some intangible benefits first one is carbon sequestration that is one of the important uh, for ecosystem service because nowadays uh, the era of climate change where the particularly greenhouse gases particularly the carbon dioxide that have been uh, witnessing the increase because of use of fossil fuels in such times uh, when we go for the phytoremediation it not only uh, read, uh, leads to the reducing the toxicity of plants uh, uh, reducing the toxicity of soils and water but also enhances the carbon sequestration it uh, checks the soil uh, erosion uh, because of use of plants it can certainly reduce the soil erosion protection uh, plantings urban plantings and environmental regulation justice and ethics uh, aesthetics so these are some intangible benefits or economic op opportunities that we provide from 
that we get from the phytoremediation when we go for the pollutant removal systems. So the bioenergy from the plants for the bio, uh, phytoremediation, some of the examples, the popular and below from the phytoremediation system are environmentally acceptable sources of biomass for bioenergy as well as wood production. Wood chips or pellets can be mixed or co-fired with coal to produce electricity. So these have been well established uh, system. So this approach is cleaner, cheaper and more environmentally acceptable than the coal alone. So we have to use in mixture uh, such kind of, uh, I mean the wood chips or pellets that have been generated from the plants like poplar or willows. <clears throat> and then soil erosion control protection uh, plantings from the phytoremediation. So when we go to phytoremediation, certainly we will uh, plant the trees or uh, grasses into the water or into the soil. So they uh, leads us to check the soil erosion. So planting a multiple species buffer of trees, shrubs, grasses along the streams in agriculture areas have been shown to greatly decrease the soil erosion. They moderate heat in summer and cold in winter for the people and animals, thereby enhancing land value, beauty, noise reduction, and wildlife habitat. <clears throat> so these are some benefits besides checking the soil erosion. So <clears throat> in heavy metal control, the pollu uh, potential use of trees as sustainable vegetation cover for heavy metal contaminant land can receive increasing attention over the period of uh, that have I mean uh, have uh, basically plants for removing the heavy metals from the soil have uh, witnessing an increasing interest over the period of time. Plants accumulate metals uh, or their contaminants in their biomass, causing reduction in the concentration in the soil surface and distribute the heavy metals within the entire root zone for the uptake. They can remove or uh, they can be removed or ashed. The ash can be disposed in the landfills or other contained disposable areas. For, uh, so that the such kind of heavy metals may not spread into the atmosphere. So what are the various advantages of phytoremediation? So it can be performed with minimal environmental disturbance. So it is very sustainable kind of approach. It is applicable to a broad range of contaminants, including many metals with limited alternative options. So possibly less secondary air or water waste are generated than with the traditional methods. So if we go for the traditional method of waste water treatment, there is a lot of sludge production. So that creates a problem for the disposal because it contains various kinds of heavy metals and or, uh, organic uh, pollutants. So in case of phytoremediation, such kind of problems doesn't exist there because it is in situ kind of uh, the phytoremediation. <clears throat> So organic pollutants may uh, be degraded to carbon dioxide and uh, water and removing environmental toxicity. And it is cost effective for large volume of water having low concentration of contaminants. Topsoil is left uh, in a usable uh, condition and may be reclaimed for the agriculture use. Soil can be left at side after contaminants are removed rather than having to be disposed or isolated. So it is cost effective for large areas uh, having uh, low to moderately contaminated uh, surface soil plant uptake of contaminant groundwater can prevent site of migration. And at last, what are the disadvantages? Because uh, any kind of technology that has both advantages and disadvantages. So the main disadvantage of phytoremediation, it is a long time is often required for the remediation. So it doesn't take uh, one week or two weeks. It sometimes takes many years, depending upon what is the intensity of the pollutants in the environment. So the treatment is generally limited to the soils at meters from the surface and the groundwater within a few meters. So the root zone basically where uh, up to which the plant roots can uh, extend such kind of soils can be remediated but the zones beyond that root zone cannot be remediated because mainly the plants they absorb pollutants from their roots so this is one of the limitation of the 
phytoremediation then climate and hydrological conditions may restrict the growth uh, or rate of growth of the plants that can be produced because the plants are some kind of time seasonal they are not perennial so seasonal change is there so sometimes climate and hydrological conditions they may restrict the growth or uptake of the pollutants from the soil or water so the contaminants may still enter in the food chain through animal insect and other plant materials so many kind of the uses of the biomass that uh, have been generated uh, from the polluted soil or water they contain various kinds of harmful chemicals or metals they can find their way into the food chain by when the grasses are uh, eaten by the plant uh, animals that have grown on the polluted soils they can find their way into the food chain so certainly it can cause a problem so but there are certain uh, other ways to dispose of such kind of uh, such kind of the biomass that have been generated from the pollutant soil but overall the advantages are more as compared to the disadvantages so this was a brief about what are the various ecosystem services that can we can uh, get from the phytoremediation i hope you all enjoy the lecture thank you for watching mm -hmm.